but I feel like it's all personal. Like it's all theater, it's all personal. So like how I'm moving as a performer and yeah. organizer is a universal move and it's personal. <laughs> it's personal yeah. and it's a universal move. So hum the notion of humanizing as a um, communications construct is very strong in my work. And it just completely pisses me off. It forces us to perform our humanity and to prove it, which is the opposite of what Schwenk is talking about. Meet me at the crossroads. The Ideas and Methods of Cultural Activists, Episode 3, Shoyinka Rahim and Rinku Sen. I knew when I met these two in Oakland in 1995, it was a historic event. Here were two very distinct individuals in a relationship, working both apart and together for social justice, each in their own strikingly different ways. Today, they're still very much together and still doing distinct yet interconnected work. Shoenka is a grassroots spiritual practitioner who leads global breathing workshops for thousands of community organizers at a time. Rinku is the new director of Narrative Initiative, a team of social justice strategists who help grassroots movements amplify and coordinate their use of narrative change. When I decided to take my vlog in a new more personal route this year, these two were the very first people I wanted to interview. My main question for them was this, how is community organizing a form of performance? And then how is performance a form of community organizing? Okay, that's it, let's go. Hey Matt, so good to see you, talk to you. Hey Schwenke. Um I, when I think about It's All Theater, it makes me um, reflect on how life is theater and um, life has a plot, life has characters, life has a setting. And um, if it's theater, then part of the question is who's directing it? Who's writing it? Who's directing it? And uh, because I'm an organizer and a uh, person devoted to social justice, always want us to be directing our own lives and the theater of our own lives, the drama of our own lives. And I hope that that is gonna have some like humor and um, heroes and lessons um, in the theater of how I live my life and um, how we live our collective life. That's the first thing I think of. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm so excited to be here on this journey with you all. Thank Thanks. you. You know, um, Bebo, like I said, is a focused breath with sound. B-I-B-O, breathe in, breathe out. And so I play with these different sounds like the Bebo roar, you know, to really tap into that high frequency of love for me, like roaring, calling forth the love. And then there's the Bebo sigh, just the, <sighs> just to allow that love to settle into the body. And then there's that, you know, be, well, hmm, hmm, what is, what are my words? What are my actions? What is my, my responsibility? And to create uh, an energy that serves the life and well being of all people globally. Hmm, Bebo, hmm. Then there's the Bebo yum, understanding that I have that power because I am the manifestation of love, good. I, I can love and I am love. So like yum, yum is that vibration, yum. And then that shh, that Bebo shh. So you hear it's all about being. So listening to spirit love to guide this being into, the, into life to create with other beings to, to serve social justice, social change, redistribution of power, money, land, and thrive to, to um, create new systems, starting with self, with being your breath. Yes, the breath, the collective breath, the individual breath and the collective breath. Yes. In, uh, in organizing and in politics and in social change, the arena of social change, 
we spend so much of our time humanizing people, quote, un, uh, quote unquote, humanizing that a lot of the theater of social justice and of politics of protest is about proving that you are human because if you're not human, then you don't get human rights. Only, only actual humans get rights. And so there's so much journalism and storytelling and television and music and in all of the genres that we work in and all of the media that we work in and um, consume, including political action, there's um, such an emphasis on humanizing immigrants, humanizing black people um, so that um, so that people with more power won't just get away with like killing us and starving us and exploiting our labor um, and taking our land. Bebo love, Bebo is a focused breath with sound. So let's do a Bebo sigh, breathe in, breathe out with a sigh. Ah. Ah. Let's do that again and elongate the sigh, Bebo sigh. Ah, that sigh is to allow the love to settle into our bodies, being devoted to the mysticism of life, you know, like that in which we can explain. Like I, maybe I can't, I can have an experience and not be able to articulate it. So like, you know, um, just trusting that I'm having this experience and recognize that I'm having this experience and that that I'm not able to um, articulate is okay because I'm gonna learn as I continue to breathe in love, breathe out love. The first thing to keep in my head is not to force people to perform their humanity. And the second thing is to be of service. And what I find is important, the thread that runs through those two things is in the quality of the questions that I'm asking and the quality of my listening. I think a lot about what questions I'm gonna bring into any interaction I'm gonna have every day. I started a new job this week. It's an executive director job. So there's expectation that I will lead, that I'll, that I'll bring ideas and that I'll bring decisions and um, and a plan and money and so on. But really my first thing had to be to connect with the other humans in my uh, immediate environment and my one-on-ones with folks. I asked about their work, but I also asked what their ambitions in life are, how I would get to understand who these people think they are, not who I need them to be, um, not who our funders need them to be, but who they want to be and who they think they are. Acceptance and the trust um, and the connection that we all share, um, it has to emerge, like it's not already there. What's going to emerge when we put ourselves together? The beauty of that is in the discovery. I think it's awesome that I don't know. I think the key to openness is recognizing that it's going to be okay. I don't have to be controlling about it. Everybody in their humanity brings something great to the, to the table, to the mix. So we all come to the table. You don't have to call it God, Buddha, Jehovah, Allah, Krishna, but we call it love coming to the table to create something new that's going to help us people. <laughs> <laughs> and other creatures too. <laughs> oh yes, the people in the world, yes. Yeah.